Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 46, Creating Date-Time Attributes Considering Time Zones. If you've done any Googling about rails and time zones, you know that it's not the easiest thing. In this episode, we'll go over how to save the time zone, and then how to save the time entered in a time zone, then in UTC. It's a little bit of a process. If you want to code along, you can clone the Ruby Thursday example app with this branch, which is the Ruby Snack just before this one, Ruby Snack number 45. You clone that branch, you CD into Ruby Thursday, you bundle, and the new Rails DB create, DB migrate. First, let's update our feature spec. We're still working with our crew member evaluations. Now we're going to select a time zone, and I'm going to select the Pacific time zone because I'm currently in the Eastern time zone and I wanted to pick something different. Then I'll fill in the evaluation time with 3 p.m. I'm just going to manually fill in a time right now. Probably in a future Ruby snack, we'll add in a time picker as well. Then I'm going to update my expectations. I'm going to go ahead and set a time in UTC. So it's going to be date yesterday plus then a space and then plus that 3 p.m. in the time zone and then it'll be the evaluation time zone that we will save and then in so it'll be dot utc everything in the database is saved as utc then in our expectations we're going to expect time zone to equal pacific time and the evaluation time to equal that time in utc let's go ahead and update our spec in our text editor going to spec then features, then let's find the create crew member evaluation spec. Going to add in two more steps to add in those new attributes and then update our expectations. And I've added the time in UTC as well. Heading over to our terminal, let's run the spec to see where we need to start. And yes, I expected there not to be that field to set the Pacific time. So let's update our form. I'm going to use a form helper called Time Zone Select to select our time zone. It'll have all the time zones that Rails knows about. At the end of the snack, I link to documentation on it to see how you can customize this. Right now, we're just going to have Time Zone Select list them in the standard order. Then we'll have just that plain text field for the evaluation time. Now let's go ahead and add the attributes as well. I'm going to create a basic Rails migration. And then I'm going to fill that in with adding the column for time zone. That's going to be a string. And then the evaluation time, which is going to be date time. Active record really does play much nicer with date time versus time. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the Ruby snack. Jumping back into our editor, let's go to views and then evaluations and then the form. And we're going to add this right after the star date. Let's go ahead and put the time just after the date and then make this pretty and save that. Then over in our terminal, let's run the command to create the blank migration. And that's running. All right, and now let's go into database migrations. It'll be the last one. And then it'll come up with just a basic one with def change and then we'll add in the two attributes we wanna add. Back in our terminal, let's rails db migrate. And that does that for the development database. It's still doing the thing where it doesn't do it for tests. So I have to go ahead and run it again with the Rails environment equals test. And then Rails DB migrate so that my test database is also set up. And I'll run that quickly. And now that's done. Let's go ahead and run our spec again to see where we are. We've added it to the form. We've added the attributes. And now it's coming up to our expectations, which it's saying our two new attributes are nil. That's because we haven't allowed those attributes in through our strong params in the controller. So let's go ahead and edit our controller. While working on this Ruby snack, I discovered a key difference between Rails 4 and Rails 5. I have somewhat similar code in a Rails 4 project that I had to do differently in Rails 5. In Rails 5, the params are not a hash. They are actually an object. It takes more work to edit those params once they've come in through your views than it did before. 
I decided it was an easier solution to edit the attributes that I needed to after the object had saved, as opposed to trying to change my params before it saved. If you find a way to do this better, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube. So I'm going to add a method after the evaluation saves before we do our redirects to add date to time and convert to UTC. Then I need to edit the evaluation params to be able to take in the time zone and the evaluation time as permitted params. Then here is our add date to time and convert to UTC method. We're going to set the time zone as the evaluation dot time zone. We've already saved that. And then evaluation time with correct date. We're going to add the date in there. Otherwise, it would be today's date. I do go ahead and want to save the correct date because I may use some filtering or some scopes. And it's much easier to do it on one attribute than, say, taking the date and filtering by that and then taking the time. If I go ahead and put the date in the evaluation time as well, it's a lot easier. So I'm actually going to go ahead and find the param star date because that's a string and then plus and then a space and then plus the params for the evaluation time. This is all a string. That's why I've left it in the controller as opposed to moving it to a model, but I'm sure I could move it to a model if I wanted to or maybe even a job to do this later. Then I'll have that evaluation time with the correct date. Then I need to put it in the time zone and that's the time zone that we have, evaluation.timezone, and that's going to be our evaluation time as time instead of a string. Now we're going to update evaluation and say that evaluation time equals the evaluation time as time. So it'll have the correct date and it'll have the correct time. If we don't do this, it's going to say 3 p.m., but in UTC, not in Pacific time. The database also saves in a 24-hour clock, so it would save as 15 in UTC when it really should have saved as 22 in UTC, which is 3 p.m. on the Pacific Coast. Alrighty, let's make those changes in our controller file. Going to add that method just after the evaluation saves. And then scroll down, and we're going to replace our evaluation params with our two new params and making it a little easier to read. And let's add our new method to add date to time and convert to UTC and save. Now let's run our test again and see where we are, making sure that we have saved the time correctly. And it passes. If you've cloned the repo and not working this in a different app, you may come across a depreciation notice dealing with Rails 5.1 and it advises to add this line to your application RB. If you have that depreciation notice, go ahead and add that and save, and it will go away. All right, a few takeaways. Again, it's my opinion, and there are plenty of Stack Overflow answers that disagree with me, but I believe Active Record really does work better with date time. I actually did try this Ruby snack with it being time, and it was much harder to try to save the date correctly. And so I went to date time, and it was a breeze. Just a reminder again that the database saves as UTC. That's important to remember. So if you're taking in a time and it needs to be in a different time zone, then you need to change it to save in the correct time for UTC. Now Rails 5 does the time zone conversion for you. So if you feed in a time that is marked as a different time zone, Rails 5 will do that conversion for you. For example, in my Rails 4 app, I also had to add in .utc when I was feeding that time into the database. But in Rails 5, it does it for you. Here are some additional resources to check out. Be sure to check out more documentation on how you can customize the time zone select. Here is a blog post I found that went a little bit deeper into time zones in Rails 5. And then here's the blog post where I learned that the controller params now returns an object instead of a hash. That's it for this Ruby snack. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to do so. I have a welcome mat that makes it very easy to sign up. If you are not already subscribed on YouTube, click that big red button to do so. You get the videos just a little bit before everyone else. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.